Hi, it's Brett the Lab Tech again, and I'm outdoors today to help show you some of the tools and techniques that biologists can use to characterize ecosystems. So ecosystem has two components, right? The abiotic or non-living component and the biotic component, the living component. And we're going to start by measuring some of the, the abiotic conditions uh, that I'm out in right now. So to do this, uh, <clears throat> I've got a backpack full of ecology equipment. Uh, probably the most pe important piece of ecology equipment is something to write with. Um, collecting your data, recording your data is crucial for any ecologist. So uh, that is one thing that you'll need. Uh, and then we've got some specialized tools and we're going to start with uh, asking ourselves, what's the weather? And we could just say, oh, it's kind of warm, kind of cold, kind of rainy. Um, th that's not going to cut it if, if we want to publish our data. So we're going to have to uh, quantify that somehow. And one of the tools that I'm going to show you how to use to quantify the weather uh, is this device here. It's called a sling psychrometer. Uh, which will tell us the temperature and also the relative humidity. <clears throat> and to use this device, uh, we need to open it up. And we'll notice that there are two thermometers here. There's a, a dry bulb and a wet bulb. So uh, we're going to wet the wet bulb and with, with ju just some plain water and swing this around and the evaporative cooling on the wet bulb um, as compared to the temperature reading of the dry bulb is going to tell us the relative humidity. We're going to get some water out here. This is just deionized water and we're going to saturate the wick around the wet bulb. And then the other thing is we want to make sure that the dry bulb is totally dry before we start doing this. That looks good. So we are ready to, uh, to use this. And the way we use this is just to uh, swing it around. So about 30 seconds, 60 seconds, somewhere in there. And what should be happening here is the uh, dry bulb is coming to equilibrium with the air that is around me. And the wet bulb is also doing the same except for it's evaporating. And it's kind of continually evaporating. So it should end up a little bit cooler unless that water can't evaporate, at which case it would be 100% uh, humidity. So how are we doing here? We'll let this go a little bit longer. All right, so it looks like that's been about a minute. And we will look at the temperature scale. Uh, I don't know if you can read that. Uh, actually, I'll. I'll read it here. So it looks like the wet bulb is at 54 degrees Fahrenheit and the dry bulb is at 59. So I'm going to record this before I forget. The dry was 59 and the wet was 54. And the, I don't know if you can read the thermometers in there. That's where it, where it was at. 
So, uh, we are going to now calculate the relative humidity. And to do this, there's this handy little slide rule. And we need to look at the uh, dry bulb temperature was 59, and the wet bulb temperature was 54. So we're looking at this upper scale here, uh, where the wet bulb temperature says 54. Line that up with where the dry bulb temperature, was, which is on this little slide rule thing, uh, says 59. And that looks like that. And then we read the, the uh, relative humidity off the scale. And it looks like that's about 72% relative humidity. So this is kind of the old-fashioned way to do this. This is a, a, an inexpensive tool and it's really easy to uh, easy to use. doesn't need batteries or anything. Uh, clearly there's got to be a more sophisticated tool, a more accurate tool. Mm. Uh, well, there is an electronic tool that will do the same thing. And that is this portable weather meter uh, that we have in these backpacks. And this tool works um, on slightly different principles, but there is a temperature sensor in here, there is a humidity sensor, and there's also a wind speed gauge. Uh, so with this you can just turn that on. And we uh, looks like we're reading the wind speed right now, which is no wind. And here we have the temperature in degrees Celsius, so we can change the mode if we want, but uh, uh, generally degrees Celsius is, is a better to read in, so we'd have to convert the uh, readings from the uh, sling psychrometer. So, uh, and again, I'm going to record this data down. So, uh, 16.8 degrees Celsius for the temperature. And this also has a, uh, tells us the wind chill based on the, the wind speed reading. And it looks like we are getting some wind now. Just a very light breeze. And that's, it's got a relative humidity sensor in it as well. And here the relative humidity sensor is reading ooh, about 79, maybe 80 percent. Uh, we'll say 79.8. 7% relative humidity. So this is reading a little bit higher than the sling psychrometer was. Uh, which one do we trust? Mm, I don't know. Uh, you know, you, could, you should report your methods. You should report the tools that you used and uh, let the, um, the reader inter make their own interpretations about what they trust more. So this has a decimal point, so it has this uh, sense of accuracy uh, or sense of precision, but is it accurate? Is it actually reading what's out here? Um, and I'm inclined to say, mm, probably not. Uh, <laughs> probably not as accurate as that decimal tells us it is. So um, the other thing that this will do for us, which is kind of handy, is it will use that a relative humidity reading to calculate the dew point. Um, so this is the the temperature at which this amount of moisture in the in the air would condense um, into water and, and precipitate, and that is 12.3 degrees Celsius uh, for the dew point. All right. So that's how to use the, the weather meter. If it was windy, I'd show you the wind speed, but uh, it's really uh, not. So uh, yeah, that's a handy little tool. Um, I'll turn that off now and put that away. And then the other thing to, uh, to show you is the uh, simpler types of thermometers. So we've got some other thermometers in here. Uh, one of these, this looks, looks like a meat thermometer um, like th that you would use in your kitchen. This is actually great for taking the temperature of soil. So I'll show you how that works in a, 
in a little bit in the next video when I work on soil. And then the other temp the thermometer I have here is a, um, a field thermometer that you could put in the water. So you probably aren't going to want to put the sling psychrometer or the weather meter into water. Um, uh, so you could tie a string onto this and you could actually um, take the temperature of water at different depths if you wanted to. Uh, get really fancy. But if you're somewhere where you're working in a stream and you want to know the water temperature, there's ways to do that. Alright, so that's how we characterize the abiotic environment, especially the weather. On uh, the next video, I'll show you how we sample soil.